A new report says Britain is the sick man of Europe. The Institute for Public Policy Research highlights serious concerns about the rising number of people off work due to a long-term illness. Let's get more, should we, on this. By the Joined by the uh, former Chief Medical Officer for England and Wales, that's Dame Sally Davis. Hello, Dame Sally. It's good to see you. What's the problem? Hello, Kate. What's the problem? What's the problem? Well, uh, unfortunately, we have become steadily sicker. This is physical health, but also mental health. So at the moment, we know that an extra 900,000 people are out of work because of their sickness. And we can also see from the trends that this is rising. And by the end of this parliament, the next five years, that will reach 1.5 million. That's already costing the taxman £4.5 billion, which could be, if those people were in work, used very, very usefully for um, helping people. So we need people to be in work because they suffer financially and socially because when they're not, we need people to be in work to contribute their taxes so the government can spend it effectively. And sadly, that's not where we are at the moment. Wait, are there particular jobs that are more impacted than others? We know that uh, it's really the lower skilled jobs that have some of the worst problems, but it pervades society. OK, how, how do we rethink our national health policy then in order to try to reduce those numbers? Well, you've got to think about the National Health Service uh, and I would call it a national sickness service. And clearly that has a role in the nation's health, but we have to have a health creation system. And that's what we're putting forward where, I mean, we make so much fuss about climate and taxing bad people and this, that and the other. Here we are with food and drink companies, for instance, making massive profits from the unhealthy foods and drinks that they not only sell, but they advertise um, immensely. We have to take uh, a lesson from the, how we've prevented tobacco spreading, how we're beginning to control it and improve things, and do the same with unhealthy foods, drinks. We need to think, let's start with children. If we invest in children, then they will have 70 to 80 healthy years. So we need to think about the elements of Sure Start that really make a difference, put those back, and think about the return on investment, which is massive, if we um, move to providing um, universal school meals so that everyone gets a nutritious meal. So there are a number of things we can do, and none will be a silver bullet. We just have to start doing all of this. But a lot of it's regulatory that won't cost the government that much money. Uh, the report does suggest that people uh, receiving benefits should be allowed to try work with no risk um, to their welfare status, see how they get on. Um, how does that work in practice? Well, if you think about it, if someone goes into work, then they lose their benefits. And so they're very scared because they're not going to want to try things if they don't think it'll work. And what we're recommending is that you have a six month period where you can try one or more jobs to try and find one that works for you, but not worry that you're going to lose your benefits. And that allows both the employee, the worker, and the company to see how they can adjust and we hope get far more people into work. Okay. Um, when we look at what's happening with Labour at the moment and they're removing the £300 for uh, some pensioners and a report that was done a couple of years ago suggesting that that will um, increase the burden on the National Health Service. So isn't this going completely against your, what you're proposing in your recommendations? Well, clearly they've thought long and hard about this and um, it, it was unfair that people like me got that money and poor people didn't. And as they raise the pensions, that picks it up. Whereas I'm taxed, low pension uh, a, um, people uh, are not taxed. 
So I think they've done the sums and decided that this is worthwhile. And what I'm asking them to do is move on and get into how we regulate to help support people being healthy. Because after all, the libertarians will say, oh, that's wrong. But I would argue that nothing constrains freedoms more than sickness that could have been prevented, avoided, or even better managed. So it's really important that we help people, we help the nation's health. Okay, and is ill health still a postcode lottery? If you are in a deprived neighbourhood and low income, then your health is much worse than if you are well off and well educated. Um, and that goes back to the food that's eaten, the lack of access in the local community and empowered community to safe exercise and activity um, and the pollution levels being higher. So you're right, it's a postcode, but we know the causes. We've suggested solutions for this and you can attack it and change it. We don't need to be the unhealthiest uh, country in Europe. Okay, it's good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us uh, on the programme this morning. Thank you. Of course, Thank we'll you. reflect on that throughout the day here on Sky News. I'm just